Hi Harish, welcome on your video. हेलो सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सो ओके मच हरेश लेट मी थैंक यू फर्स्ट आपने टाइम uh, स्पेयर किया ऑन माय रिक्वेस्ट टू शेयर सम इंफॉर्मेशन विद सिविल इंजीनियर्स एंड हरेश यू आर डूइंग योर पीएचडी इन डब्लिन इन आयरलैंड कॉलेज ऑफ डब्लिन इन आयरलैंड एंड इट इज इन एनवायरमेंटल डोमेन सो हरेश माय दिस वीकली सेशन आई वुड लाइक टू हैव वीकली सेशन विद यू एंड द पर्पस विल बी टू टेल सम अपॉर्चुनिटीज जो सिविल इंजीनियरिंग के स्टूडेंट्स को कुछ अपॉर्चुनिटीज के बारे में हम बताएं कि वो किस डायरेक्शन में आगे रिसर्च परस्यू कर सकते हैं तो इस वीक हम हरेश किस डायरेक्शन में बच्चों को बता सकते हैं और कौन सा स्टूडेंट हमारा टारगेट है मतलब हम बीटेक के स्टूडेंट्स को टारगेट करें या एमटेक के करें फर्स्ट सेकंड ईयर के स्टूडेंट को टारगेट करें और क्या ऑप्शन हम इस वीक बता सकते हैं जी सर तो पहले तो मैं ये बताना चाहूंगा कि अभी आ, मैं आपको जो बताने वाला हूँ ये सब रिसर्च इन्वेस्टिगेशन से जो करेंटली फोकस्ड है वेरी हाई इंटेंसिफाइड है अभी रिसर्च सो यू विल डिस्कस अबाउट सर्टन आस्पेक्ट ऑफ रिसर्च दैट यू कुड लुक फॉर टू एंड एस्पेशली इट इज वेरी वेरी यूजफुल फॉर दोज हु आर करेंटली इन देयर सेकेंड ईयर ऑफ मास्टर्स स्टिल डिसाइडिंग विच प्रोजेक्ट और विच डिरेक्शन आई शुड फोकस इन ऑर्डर टू गेट ए पी एच डी अब्रॉड बिकॉज टू बी ऑनेस्ट द डोमेन दैट यू डू योर पास्ट रिसर्च एक्सपीरियंस इज ए प्लेस ए मेजर रोल इन गेटिंग यूर सिलेक्शन अब्रॉड so that's what we are going to uh, discuss okay so harish before we discuss may i ask you like jo btech ka bachcha hai final year semester mein aur project ke bare mein soch raha hai aur direct phd ke liye target kar raha hai kya wo bhi isko uh, usko benefit hoga isse jo aap batane wale exactly yes it's it's a bit more flexible than uh, you know masters because if you were doing masters in environment you can only do a project in environment but if you are doing right. a bachelors you can choose any branch like right. It's up to your choice, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that that's that's also possible. Uh, bachelors for bachelors also, yeah. Good, good. Okay, so please go ahead, Harish. Huh. Okay, so firstly, we will discuss about a uh, two uh, branches, uh, which is environmental and water resource. Although they are a bit different, but I have categorized them into the uh, same pool because they are more or less you know similar. So. Mm -hmm. at the moment what i see especially in europe mm -hmm. there is a lot of focus on advanced uh, waste water treatment technologies mm -hmm. so how like tertiary and advanced technologies we can uh, conduct to retrieve some uh, you know useful resources from waste water mm -hmm. all these kind of stuff and then also there is A, a particular emphasis on techno economic uh, analysis i have recently come across few advertisements where they have asked for uh, techno economic analysis so it's like you would also consider the technical criteria and optimize the cost in terms of implementation so that's that's another thing that you need to have uh, moving on air pollution so recently we all heard the news about uh, shutting down of delhi for about few days because of the heavy air pollution so that is another issue that is currently emerging and needs to be you know discussed mm -hmm. coming to like more likely to water resource engineering water scarcity and security is very very important so it's like flood inundation you can see like in lo lots of uh, countries there is uh, water floods and all so they are actually predicting uh, the worst case scenario how how it might damage and what would be the flow of water uh, in those areas so water scarcity and security something is very very important at the moment and additionally i'd like to add something like we already discussed uh, like the government is so intensely working on net zero aspect like zero carbon aspect and all any project that contributes to sustainability and net zero aspect is a definite uh, worth trying project you should definitely go for it all over the world they are really recruiting uh, loads of candidates uh, international students mm -hmm. for all these investigations so well that that we discussed about uh, environmental and water resource engineering mm -hmm. and we can now move move ahead to structures and uh, construction and management so they mm -hmm. kind of again are closely similar not very similar though but yeah so mm -hmm. currently especially in europe i don't know why there is overwhelming number of hirings 
for mm -hmm. offshore wind turbine. So mm -hmm. offshore wind turbine is something which is established in the middle of the ocean or sea and they mm -hmm. harness wind energy uh, mm -hmm. from the turbines. Mm -hmm. So that's what actually is very triggering research at the moment and uh, I would uh, you know suggest uh, the master students or bachelor students to look into it. And even if you, if you if you like if you can go and search over the internet, you can find many research uh, mm -hmm. topics about this. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and again there is another thing: modular construction. I was just walking by around my campus, University mm -hmm. College of Dublin, and they started a construction about two months ago, and uh, it's going to be finished in two months. Three-story building, I think. So, like, mm -hmm. I I asked some structural engineer. What is this going on like three months and they are raising a three-story structure? Mm -hmm. So he was like, this is called modular construction. Okay. So what is happening these days is that they're working, like they are constructing everything in an ideal environment, which is laboratory mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And they are just uh, getting the things, you know, like slabs and pillars, and then they're integrating at the location, the field location. So that mm -hmm. saves time and money, everything. So there mm -hmm. is also a lot of research in this field also for structural mm. engineering so definitely mm. worth having a look at that and also earthquake engineering wind load stability of buildings and all in structural mm. engineering is very very important mm. now coming to transportation domain so transportation domain i have actually come across certain projects one of one of my friend what he was doing is he was uh, trying to optimize the real time uh, lane assistance like mm -hmm. uh, what should be the speed limit although the design uh, limits are given on the roads but still how to switch lanes between one lane to second lane is it safe how safe what should be the speed this is like a real-time analysis that he is doing and that's really interesting like we have had a discussion so something with the traffic optimization things uh, would work actually for transportation engineering and also there are uh, projects like road construction materials. Mm -hmm. Apart from all these uh, uh, like conventional uh, road construction materials that has been used uh, for the roads and all there are certain advanced materials which are being used, which are cost effective and they give more strength. So there are pretty much investigations in this domain as well. Mm -hmm. So finally, one is left that is geotechnical engineering. Mm -hmm. So Again, geotechnical engineering, they mostly work with the soil. So soil erosion on the seabed while mm -hmm. establishing a offshore wind turbine mm -hmm. or even onshore wind turbine. That is really, really important because that gives you the, the research gives you the stability of the wind turbine. And once they establish this, they make sure that it stands still for about uh, at least 20, 30 years, coming 20, 30 years to harness energy. Because, mm -hmm. you know, see the cars and all, they have gone completely electric here. In Ireland, like I see out of out of 10 cars, I see, I think 50% or more than that is electric now. Completely mm -hmm. electric. So mm -hmm. they, are, they are promoting the sustainability and uh, all these energy things. So that is, mm -hmm. again, something that we could look forward to. Mm -hmm. Well, so yeah. That, that's okay, Harish, I, I, I want to uh, show you something. Uh, I want to show you the website of IIT Roorkee. Nowadays, we are mentoring students for post-gate activities and post-gate specialization where they have to choose the option for them. And when I was going through the website of IIT Roorkee, I found many departments. Uh, I thought of quickly taking your view on uh, what these departments are about and what can suit student who is uh, thinking of you know pursuing higher education abroad. So let me share my screen here uh, with you. Uh, maybe through that, I get to know something about IIT Roorkee. So when I think it is visible to you, Harish, no? This? Yes, yes, sir. I can see. No, these, these are academic departments of IIT Roorkee. And uh, I'll be asked talking more about civil engineering. Detail may see civil engineering department, we will see a little later. But as of now, something about the interdisciplinary departments. So I know that uh, civil engineers are eligible to pursue their masters in earth science, earthquake engineering. I will keep on taking your quick view on uh, if some student pursues his masters in earthquake engineering, earth science, 
So what are the opportunities for PhD abroad in these particular domains? We know there's earthquake engineering in IT Rurke and that is quite, uh, you know, old and famous also. Thank so, you, sir. I'm happy that you have asked me this question. Actually, uh, to be very honest, getting a foreign PhD is really flexible. So it, mm -hmm. it just have to have your, you know, research relevancy. We have this art, uh, we have this art science building. There is a separate big building in my university for department of art science. And I completely understand the work they do because I'm from civil background. So it's okay. kind of like we understand. Uh, as mm -hmm. you have mentioned, it is interdisciplinary. So definitely anyone who is working on art, science, engineering at the moment, doing masters is flexible to continue or pursue his, uh, you know, PhD in civil or even the same art, uh, science, engineering. So, so it is... Question, uh, my next question and related question to you was, when you fill the form for masters in institute like IIT Roodkey, Civil engineering department goes at higher grade score and our science may not go at that higher grade score. But I tell students that even if you get earth science, maybe because your grade score was not that high, even then you can pursue a very good career in civil engineering later on by joining PhD program abroad. Am I correct in that? Or not? Definitely. You are very right about that. Doesn't matter. Like, it, it just it's just about the research relevancy. You know, I know because of the competition in India, it's difficult to get into the civil uh, mm. direct domain. But mm. Mm. if you really look forward to a PhD from the very beginning, like if you are clear in your head from the very mm. starting that I'm going to go for a PhD abroad, definitely worth uh, joining art science okay, or any of and, these interdisciplinary branches. Yeah. And now we come to hydrology. That is also department of hydrology, separate department. Yeah. So, so this that is, is also, also a part of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then there's a hydro and renewable energy. That is also one department. <laughs> Again, all these part, all these branches, I can see a, uh, you know, bits and pieces of environmental engineering. So definitely okay. worth joining them. Okay. So these are some of the departments for uh, uh, IIT and this water resource development and management. What is this uh, domain, uh, Harish? This is also so quite actually, promising. Hmm. Yes, it is actually. I mean, they mostly work on water quantity, like environment, they work on water quality, uh, mm -hmm. like investigate what are the pollutants, how to reduce the pollutant loads to mm -hmm. uh, make clean water from wastewater, something like that. But uh, these guys, they work on the quantity, like uh, mm -hmm. they, they predict the, you know, flood, uh, what whatever, like in next 20 years, what are the mm -hmm. expectancy that we see floods mm -hmm. in different, different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So they mm. work on like quantity majorly. Mm. So the department which I was telling you, showing you, they were interdisciplinary department. When we yes. come to civil engineering department in IIT Roodkey, and why mm -hmm. I'm showing you IIT Roodkey here, because as we know, Thompson Engineering College, this was the oldest engineering college of India. Now mm. prestigious IIT Roodkey for civil engineering. That time it used to be only for civil engineers. So these are the courses and masters in civil engineering in IIT Roodkey. You know, environmental, geomatics, geotechnical, hydraulic, structural, transportation, engineering. These are the departments here. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, students keep on asking, I mean, uh, kya career hai, opportunities hai? Agar hum aage jate hai, what are the opportunities in these departments? So I thought of uh, uh, discussing with you that, okay, what are these departments? So, so Harish, uh, this environmental engineering, what we are talking mm -hmm. about is, when we talk about abroad country, foreign country, in India, we think of jobs in uh, maybe Central Pollution, Pollution Control Board, Government uh, State Pollution Control Board, those kind of jobs. But what is the opportunity for students after they graduate, you know, environmental engineering, they do their uh, higher education or PhD from these institutes? Okay, I will tell you a fact. Like I knew a few of the master's students who were doing a master's in environmental engineering from my university. All of them, they got placed in Ireland with a okay. good salary after they finish their uh, mm. uh, master's. Master and I asked like, what kind of job do you do? They kind of do like designing things, you know, treatment plant de designing, they're monitoring, like these are like continuous things, operation mm. and maintenance that you cannot escape. Like you have mm. to keep track of everything. And for that, they need resources, especially human resources. So mm. these jobs are never going to end. And on top of that, I see, I don't know why, but there is 
tremendous amount of advertisements, especially for environmental engineering in Europe, mm. lots and lots of. Mm. So if you are targeting Europe and environmental engineering is your domain, it's a very good choice actually at the moment, I think. It's like a blooming sector. Mm. So I believe this sustainability, environmental engineering, these are linked terms, right, Arish? They are. They are very and linked. And government is dumping a lot of money, a lot of things on research and all to save planet Earth and sustainability is a catchword, a buzzword nowadays. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Green technology so, so, is another uh, uh, term that I'd like to add to environmental engineering. So someone who is working on green technology also is more than welcome. So they also worked on another system. It's like a like a like a closed system where you know they they do do some kind of process and from the starting of the process till the ending of the process there is nothing going out of the system it is just intact and it is circulating circulating so it is kind of a like a green technology something like that wonderful so i think for this uh, session for this week uh, we have given sufficient gyan to students and uh, we will pop up next week once again. And uh, let me request you, Harish, that uh, every week we come out with some opportunities uh, and we target both students of undergraduation and uh, post-graduation also. Those who are interested to pursue opportunities abroad, maybe for MS or PhD or whatever. And tell them that, okay, these are the areas. And if you do your project or if you enhance your skill, I would also request you to someday share with us as a civil engineer, what kind of skills are required other than obviously academic knowledge. So what kind of uh, software skills or other skills are required, which make you more suitable for, you know, these kind of courses under the mentorship of some professors in these universities. So that also I request you to share with the students so that they, when they do their courses here, they do in such a way that they become, you know, their CV becomes more strong for a selection in these kind of courses abroad. Yes, sir, definitely. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. So uh, see you then, uh, Harish, next week. And yeah. uh, we'll again go for our second session. Thank you, Arish. Yeah.